evil presence, the NATO pact evil presence of terrorists inside East Aleppo. You, you could see them when they were evacuating people who they were. When we went to East Aleppo, we saw their slogans on the streets, we saw their signs. They all said ISIS, they all said Lusa. I pictured myself, my phone, evil presence that was in my city, and it's over now. Of course, I'm, I'm gonna have to celebrate. It may be over in Aleppo. The civil war is certainly not over in Syria. And surely the actions of the Syrian government, the awful suffering that there's been, makes the possibility of any sort of deal about the future of your country even harder to reach. How can you call it a civil war when you have a quarter million foreign fighters fighting on behalf of various factions and gangs? I mean, I don't are you know claiming why there are not Syrians in the city of Aleppo who are opposed to your government, opposed to the Assad regime, and have been fighting it? Actually, I don't know if you can call Bilal Abdul Karim, the American that came from New York, Syrian rebel, or if you call the, the hundreds of Saudis that were in, in Eastern Aleppo Syrian rebels. Sure, but I was asking about the others. I was asking you about the Syrians. Of course they were Syrians, like they were Afghans with Bin Laden uh, and the Saudi gang when they were in Afghanistan, of course. I mean, they're always the bunch, the criminal bunch that will go with whoever pays more dollars. What does that mean that we have to let them in? They killed 11,000 civilians in the various parts of Aleppo by deliberate bombardment. It's time for them to leave. You sound it's like over. you regret, rather, that you're having to. You tweeted, dear friends in the West, we were going to kill them all, but your leaders wanted to free them. Enjoy having them in your countries then. Do you regret yes, that you I, couldn't actually kill them? Of course we regret. I don't want you to mix my words. I posted a video of Nusra gangs, Haida gangs, Chiri, all these, they're rifleable. There are terrorists they're on your country's terrorist list, on the US terrorist list. Of course I regret not killing them all. You know why? Because they now are, are going to Idlib and promise they are going to Europe. If you want them to be your neighbor, this is your problem. What now, Mr. Shahabi? What? will be done by your government, by the president you support, to bring any peace to your country. This is not about me supporting a certain president. This is about legitimacy. In one mile, what now, though? at the roundabout, now, take the second the exit onto A46 North. No more Islamist through. Now we have to go for the building. Now we have to have some reconciliation. And now is what I asked you. First of all, by getting rid of international terrorism on our soil. This is the most important thing. Terrorism backed by NATO and backed by Qatar and Saudi and Turkey. Do you pause at all before describing your city as unified when that seems to be a code for the fact it's a mass graveyard? No, of course it's unified. All morning in the wake of an accident early on on the M40. Just the usual build up of traffic northbound from the two at Arthur Church up to three at Redditch. The southbound queues, which were at one point back from junction five, have eased off. The M6 is doing okay, the few motorway cameras, even that usual spot from 10 down to 8. But it is very busy on the Aston Expressway, look at the cameras, I can see queues in both directions. Particularly busy as you head on that two-lane section out towards Spaghetti Junction. And apart from that, just the uh, usual rush hour traffic to watch At the out roundabout, for. take the second the exit onto A46 North. Heading into Birmingham City Centre. And in Wolverhampton, there is a bit of traffic on Penn Road. And quite busy too through Burntree heading past, um, well, through Dudley Port, heading past Dudley Port Station. Now, if you see any problems, then call the BBC WM 95.6 travel line on 0330 123 3550. Dicko's overhead kick miscued. Edwards! Oh, the magnificent goal by Edwards! Never miss a moment of the football season. Really, sorry, right through, David, go! Oh, yeah! In three quarters of a mile, at the roundabout, take the second exit onto A46 North. Radio for the West Midlands. Uh, BBC WM, it's Adrian Goldberg with you. Uh, welcome to your breakfast show on BBC WM. Talking about who's about huge displacement of people, lost generations, lives. Lost. In half a mile, the at the roundabout, the take the second exit. Deal with uh, ISIS or Daesh, as uh, we call it now. Um, and thirdly, focus on devising a strategy in the West that, if you like, wins the peace. Uh, I'm afraid we've lost the war, but that does not mean, if we get the right strategy, that we need to lose the peace. And uh, I think that's what uh, Western politicians and statesmen must now focus on. And the line there about, look, enjoy having these people in your own country, is he right that many of these people who are terrorists will come back here At the roundabout, the take the second exit onto A46 North. Well, I think, undoubtedly, the record is there to substantiate that, chaps. 
view. I mean, they'll go to Italy. And I should say that, you know, to, listening to him and, and uh, the rather chilling sort of threats within it, the fact is that the Russians and Assad have allowed uh, many tens of thousands of their opponents to get out uh, of Aleppo and now go to uh, Idlib. Um, so we should take, I think, at least for now, the Russians at, at face value. Um, it is not in their interest to have a big propaganda uh, problem by them being seen to interrupt that flow. I mean, they're, they're smelling of roses, if you like, in some respects. In 1.4 miles, they're now keep right onto M69 North. Allowing their, their enemy to leave. And I think that is the right thing, both in terms of the long term, but also the short term from the humanitarian perspective. Okay, but your, your argument is that we didn't need to be that actually, and I think you came up with a plan to get rid of President Assad back in 2012, didn't you? When you in one mile, we did. Keep um, right. We, we offered a credible military strategy um, that would have taken about a year, was our estimation, to execute. Uh, we were told we didn't have a year, so that plan's not very good. And I remember saying at the time, well, if you don't want to do this, if you, if you do it properly, in fact, right, you clout and don't do it. It's a very uh, useful military adage. I said, well, we better think, start thinking about backing us there, because the, uh, the result of not doing it properly could be the worst of all worlds. And I, I hate to say, you know, probably without on the cross over there, but if, on reflection, we had done that, we had another opportunity in 2013, uh, Assad was at a very low ebb, the Russians weren't really active, the Iranians had to get it up. There was a moment then when we could have done with him. And I think that we Keep right to onto N69 North. So that moment is gone. Uh, the conditions on the ground, the political conditions in Syria have now changed. But is it, is it realistic? I mean, it's easy to say that. Go straight on for 13 minutes to Junction 3 to M1 North. I it would take a year to do it properly. It would take decades because you would need to find who comes in behind President Assad. And you're then invested in a way that, you know, people have learned the lessons arguably from Iraq, whether it's the right lesson or not. That you, the country doesn't want to make that commitment. Well, clearly Britain and America and other Western countries didn't want to. Well, I don't think we've got time to go into it. All I can reassure you is it was a critical, credible political military strategy. Uh, and that's why it would have taken a year. And it would have forced, uh, because the, the prize was success, it would have forced the war in part or the, the uh, various opposition groups to... Accident A8A6 is closed from junction 24 of the M1. That's causing some slow traffic around there, although the M1 seems to be going fairly past, uh, fairly well past there. A453, a couple of lanes closed southbound on here, causing some very heavy traffic heading southbound on there. That's down towards the same junction. New Parks Way, A563, looking busy across the junction with the A47, both directions for that one. And there's some slow moving traffic down towards junction 23 at the moment, uh, further on to 22, just a bit of slow moving traffic there. Uh, it doesn't look like too much going on. Hopefully it will disappear before too long. I'll keep you updated from area traffic control in Leicester. This is Ed. I'm enjoying your selfie, Ed, and you your Christmas jumper on. Although it's quite a restrained one. It's a black jumper with white detail. It's, it's very tasteful. It's, funnily right enough, it, that, you know the forward-facing camera is not as good as the other camera. It's actually a green jumper, and I was trying yes. desperately to get to get it to sort of focus properly. To, lighting, to darling. Right. Lighting is everything. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was distracted by the beard. You should know that with your theatrical background. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like some prosthetics if the guy does he take requests. Oh, well, you bet, you can always ask. Yeah, brilliant. Right, there'll be no traffic traffic for the next 15 minutes. Well, presents for that matter. Uh, we'll catch up with Helen who's trying to find uh, the most festive and outrageous Christmas sweaters in town today in just a minute or two. It's Christmas time. Did the situation on the ground rather than rather naive speculation about what might be the case if we do a bit of this and a bit of that? You've worked for Jim Price. I know very well. He's a very good friend and everyone who has has the highest regard for him. And staying with what we have learned from the uh, We've had overnight the comments from the current president, we've got 36 days left in the post, saying, I think there's no doubt that when any foreign government tries to impact on the integrity of elections, he was talking about the accusations that Russia's been hacking in presidential elections, that we need to take action, and we will, at a time and a place of our own choosing. Some of it may be explicit and publicised, some of it may not be. What do you understand him to mean? Well, um, 
Cyber. Well, 